Good Wednesday morning, folks. Um, at least it'll be for like the next five minutes. 11.55 a.m. on August 17th, 2022. And uh, this is 413 Sports Talk. Um, number 417. Glad to have you with us. Uh, prepare for a big show. A lot to talk about. Uh, also, I scored some baseball last night, and we will talk about the WNBA playoffs as they are set to begin this evening. 417 is up, 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 and away. Okay, so we're going to talk first about the WNBA postseason. It's here, finally. All the blood, sweat, and tears that these courageous women put into the sport um, that we all love face another test today. The stakes are most definitely higher, and these wins are career-defining ones. Who will step up? Who's going to do it? Who wants the 2022 WNBA championship banner slash trophy slash ring combo more? Is it Kelsey Plum in the Las Vegas Aces? Hmm? Sabrina Ionescu in the New York I- um, not Islanders. Wow, Liberty. Excuse me. Who knows? Who knows? Um, anyway, uh, Tiger Woods is to meet with a group of players at the BMW uh, Championship, the leaders in the sport of golf, to rally support for the PGA over the LIV Golf Series. <laughs> Looks like Tiger turned down that 700 mil. <laughs> um, sources say that 76ers in the Ben Simmons have reached a settlement in grievance over withheld pay, though unfortunately no details were left that I can leave you guys. Fernando Tatis Sr. says that it is a catastrophe uh, that his son's rep has taken a hit in regards to recent PED suspension. It's all right. <clears throat> you know, he'll get through it. He'll, he'll be back in the sport that he loves, just like his dad loved the sport. And um, he'll be producing in no time. I have complete faith in this guy. Tampa Bay Buccaneers agreed to deal with defensive end of former Raider Carl Nassib. Uh, most recently came out as gay a few years back, and it kind of ruffled some feathers. Um, though, unlike Michael Sam, he still kind of, like, maintained the roster. It was, it was dope, and he played for a little while. Um, most notably with Tampa Bay, Jason Pierre-Paul did not resign. Um, and Joe Tryon is going to fill in um, to that role. I'm um, sorry, Tri- Joe Tryon is another name. I can't really pronounce it, and I didn't put it here. Just I knew him as Joe Tryon in, high, in college, well, he, when he played college. Anyway, um, offensive linebacker Cam Gill suffered a list Frank injury in the preseason opener last Saturday. So this is definitely leaving that pass rush uh, position thin. An upcoming pitching classic, which I believe actually happened last night, uh, Justin Verlander versus Dylan Cease. These two pitchers rank first and second in the AL in ERA, with Verlander's 1.85 mark, a tick better than Cease's at 1.96. Um, according to the Elias Sports Bureau, it's just the third matchup of starting pitches with sub 2.00 ERAs, with a minimum of 20 starts since the MLB lowered the pitching mound in 1969. That's it for the news. Let's talk Major League Baseball scores. Uh, Philly over Cincinnati, 11-4. Miami over San Diego, 4-3. Boston over Pittsburgh Pirates, 5-3. In 11 innings, the Cubs took care of the Nets, 7-5. Tampa Bay, 3. Yanks, 1. Baltimore, 4. Toronto, 2. Detroit, 4. Cleveland, 3. Atlanta, 5. Mets, nothing. Minnesota scored 9. Kansas City hit nothing. Scored nothing, too. St. Louis, 5. Colorado, 4. Oakland, 5. Texas, 1. Chicago White Sox, 4. Houston, 9. Astros 3. Uh, Dodgers in 11 innings take care of Milwaukee 5 4. And Seattle over Los Angeles Angels 8 to 2. Now that is it for w- uh, uh, MLB scores. Now we're going to talk NFL really quickly. Preseason battles. I give you hungry football fans 10 preseason battles that you should be keeping your eyes glued to. Currently working on an all quarterback list. Asterisk, asterisk. Uh, but here's what I have for you now. Uh, if anything, I should be able to provide an updated report by Friday, so we'll stick to non-quarterbacks here. Let's begin in Buffalo, where a key gig in one of the league's best offenses is up for grabs. And that yeah, job is the uh, slot receiver. Buffalo Bills had the third highest scoring offense in the NFL last season at 28.4 per game. But the receiving corps will look a lot different in 2022. Cole Beasley and Emmanuel Sanders, Buffalo's second and third leading receivers in 2021, are both gone. <coughs> Stephon Diggs is still Josh Allen's top wideout, and Gabriel Davis is ascending to the number two role. But uh, who will operate in slot? 
Jamison Crowder has thought to be the favorite target inside, but Isaiah McKenzie had been playing ahead of him at, at training camp. McKenzie, who put up an 11-catch, 125-1 touchdown line against the Patriots in Week 16 of last year, is more explosive than Crowder and offers a bit of rushing potential, kind of like what they do with Debo. Crowder was behind the eight ball after dealing with soreness at the outset of camp, and McKenzie just returned after a two-day injury absence, so it's kind of like 50-50 there. This competition is far from over, <coughs> but the Bills did list McKenzie ahead of Crowder on their unofficial depth chart release earlier this week. Uh, New England Patriots uh, pass catching a running back. While the New England Patriots still need to sort out their messy cornerback situation, a new area of concern was created on Tuesday when veteran running back James White announced his retirement from the NFL. White suffered a serious hip injury last season, and New England likely knew there was a decent chance the 30-year-old would hang up the cleats then. Now, the staff can use the rest of the training camp and preseason to determine who will take over the club's pass catching running back duty. The leading candidate for that role may be veteran Ty Montgomery, former Packer, who signed a two-year, $3.6 million deal with the Patriots back in March. Montgomery has the skill set to thrive as a third down back in New England's offense as a former receiver turned running back. But so too does rookie Pierre Strong Jr., my favorite, one of my favorite running backs in this class, who flashed as a receiver at the East-West Shrine Bowl before the Patriots selected him in the fourth round. New England could also, also choose to put more on Ramondre Stevenson's plate in his, in his second NFL season. Normal starter Damian Harris is not a receiver in any sense of the word. Uh, he has just two career games with more than three targets. Uh, Stevenson only earned 18 targets in his rookie campaign, but he profiles as a back who could handle more passing game work if the Patriots don't want to rely on Montgomery or Pierre Strong Jr. Interesting stuff there. Moving right along, Baltimore Ravens, number two wide receiver. Tight end Mark Andrews is the Baltimore Ravens' uh, facto top pass catcher, de facto. Um, and Rashad Bateman will lead the wide receiver corps, I assume. After trading Marquise Brown to the Cardinals during the draft, Baltimore is looking for at least one more complimentary receiver. Enter Devin Duvernay. Uh, recently returned to practice after missing five days with a thigh issue. And he's listed as the number two receiver on the Ravens' depth chart. A third-round pick out of Texas in 2020, Duvernay received 47 targets a season ago, third most among Baltimore's remaining weapons behind Andrews and Bateman. His main competition appears to be James Prochet, an SMU product drafted three rounds after Duvernay in 2020. Prochet has had an excellent camp, according to Jeff Zebrick of the uh, Athletic um, there's some newspaper out there in Baltimore who notes that the 25-year-old is typically the first player to arrive for practice and among the last to leave. <coughs> if neither Duvernay nor Prochet separates themselves in the preseason, Baltimore could conceivably rotate its tertiary uh, receiving options. Uh, number three, Cincinnati Bengals, left guard. This is the man here we're going to talk about one of my favorite players um, in the league, actually. Cincinnati Bengals made a concerted effort to fix their problematic offensive line over the offseason. Signing center Ted Karras, right guard Alex Kappa, and out of right tackle Lyle Collins. With former first round pick Jonah Williams entrenched on Joe Burrow's blind side, the only left guard remains up. Only the only option that is up for grabs is a left guard spot. Jackson Carmen, the 46th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, split time between left and right guard in his rookie year and is now the leading contender to start at left guard. That's what I'm talking about. I really hope he gets it. After offering inconsistent play last season, Carmen also has looked more stable in training camp this year. Unlike the majority of since these starters, Carmen will play in a free at Friday's preseason game. Uh, to earn more reps as he tries to fend off rookie fourth round Cordell Volson, who's very good, who may need some time to develop coming out of North Dakota State, by the way, as well. <coughs> Green Bay Packers wide receiver. Uh, the Green Bay Packers wide receiver depth chart seems to be crying out for a veteran addition. But general manager Brian Gutenkutz said in late July he's not interested in signing free agent pass catcher. As such, the preseason is shaping up as critical for Green Bay to figure out our wide receiver court. Injuries can play a prominent role in determining the Packers' wide receiver options. Second-round rookie Christian Watson has been on the, the pup list um, since the beginning of camp. Green Bay is hoping he can return soon. Meanwhile, veteran Randall Cobb had missed multiple practices this week with a foot injury. 
Bill's absences have allowed fourth rounder Romeo Dobbs to shine in training camp, where he's been making spectacular plays daily. Players often are players choosing after pick 100 rarely, rarely contribute uh, much in their rookie years. But Dobbs could be ready for producing in four straight seasons at Nevada. If the season started today, Alan Lazard, Sammy Watkins, and Dobbs will likely be Green Bay's top three wideouts. That's just how we say it. Minnesota Vikings safety. <clears throat> Louis Sign uh, out of Georgia was Kwesi Adolfo Mensah's first draft pick as the Minnesota Vikings GM. But the Georgia safety isn't being handed a starting role. While Sign has mixed in with the starters during training camp, Cameron Bynum is the current starter next to stalwart Harrison Smith. Sign should. Uh, sorry. Sh- Sign could unsurp Bynum at some point. It's just a matter of when this that happens. NFL teams want their first round selections to start unless there is a pressing reason for them not to. Bynum doesn't have a significant leg up in terms of experience, but uh, 2021 fourth round pick has only played 211 career snaps. Detroit Lions cornerback. The Detroit Lions have outside corner locked into a starting job, but it's not the former number three overall pick on their roster. Amani Oruare, hopefully I did not butcher that, will start on the side of Detroit's defense as he enters a contract year. On the other side, Jeff Okuda is competing with the converted safety Will Harris for the other cornerback role. Okuda hasn't been able to live up to his draft billing through three NFL seasons. His rookie year was an unmitigated disaster, both for both from a performance and an injury perspective, and he subsequently missed all of 2021 after tearing his Achilles. Uh, instead of serving as a lockdown corner he was meant to be, Okuda is just trying to hang on to a starting position at this point. Harris is moving the corner after spending the first three seasons of his career at safety. The Lions listed Harris ahead of Okuda on their unofficial depth chart, and they are opposed to the idea of a timeshare at that position. A loser of this battle would have theoretically play nickel, but they may not work out given that A.J. Parker is expected to man the slot in Detroit. Wow. <coughs> Now we're on to Tampa Bay, interior offensive line. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were dealt the serious blow. In late July, when Pro Bowl center Ryan Jensen suffered a severe knee injury. Um, Tampa Bay hasn't officially placed him on injured reserve, but he's facing a long absence and seems likely to miss the 2022 season. The Buccaneers have a replacement for Jensen in 2021 third-round pick Robert Haney. Hainsey, sorry. Um, but they're looking at three new starters on the interior offensive line. Hainsey, trade acquisition Shaq Mason, and whoever wins the training camp battle at left guard. Nice how Shaq Mason got in there, right? <coughs> um, Aaron Stinney, Nick Levert, and Brandon Walton have all seen action at left guard during camp, while rookie's second-round pick Luke Gattachy could potentially factor in as well. He was awesome for Central Michigan. <laughs> Uh, Stinney looks like the favorite to start, though. He's only played 136 career snaps, but that's more than Walton, 60, and Walton combined. <laughs> um, for the number nine thing, we have the New Orleans Saints left tackle spots. After losing Teron Armstead to the Dolphins in free agency, the New Orleans Saints used a pair of two first-round picks on Northern Iowa left tackle Trevor Penning. Um, thus far, he started multiple training camp fights and gotten kicked out of practice, but that's just who he is, and that's exactly who you want on that offensive line. Penning has been rotating with veteran James Hurst at left tackle. Hurst is 30, has been New Orleans' swing tackle for the past two seasons, and started 15 games in 2021 due to Armstead's injuries. Hurst may be the NFL's best backup tackle, honestly, uh, and he could start for a lot of teams, but Penning is clearly the future for the Saints. If he can re- rein in that aggressiveness to a certain Point. Penning would likely be New Orleans starter. Um, this is all said and done. And finally, we have the Arizona Cardinals cornerback position. The Cardinals somehow finished fifth in pass defense, DVOA. Wow, it's crazy. Last season, despite not having any elite talent at the cheap CB position. Byron Murphy is solid in the slot, but rookie fourth rounder Marco Wilson struggled and pressed into full time duty, and veterans uh, Robert Alford and Bashad Breland are no longer on the roster. Murphy and Wilson will be starters again in 2022 by default. Arizona still has a gaping hole at one cornerback spot, though. Antonio Hamilton, Josh Jackson, Brian Borders, and Jace Whitaker are among the unsurprising options vying for that role in the camp. Uh, if at least one member of that cadre doesn't flash in the preseason, um, for the Cardinals, it could be big trouble. 
Arizona's depth chart desperately needs a veteran addition. The cards could bring Alvard back after he played well in 2021, but he's entering his age 34 campaign. Wow, I know somebody who's 34 could still go out there and do it. Uh, fellow aged options such as Janoris Jenkins, Joe Hayden, AJ Bouye, and Xavier Rhodes are still available on the open market. Now, that's it for the NFL. Let's talk WWE playoffs real quick. They begin tonight as the New York Liberty and Sabria Ionescu take on my girl Candace Parker in Chicago Sky. That tips off at 8 p.m. High scoring affair in this first round game, and I'm going with um, Chicago and Candace Parker. Then at 7 p.m., we have Phoenix at the Las Vegas Aces with my girls Adrian Wilson and Kelsey Plum. Sup, Plum Dog? You ready to win a, ready to win a playoff game? <coughs> uh, the Aces cruise the victory here. Uh, Thursday evening, round one, uh, Dallas at Connecticut Sun for eight, and Washington at Seattle for ten. We will preview and predict all WNBA playoff games with daily up-to-date metrics and stats. So, I mean, it's Wednesday. I'm not going to give you my... You know what? I'll be nice. I have Connecticut over Dallas tomorrow, and I want Seattle over Washington. Those mystics. There it is. And this is the end of episode 417. I'm Rahim Eskali. Uh, I had fun making this one. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I uh, love you all. Wishing you nothing but health, wealth, and success. And just know that the Western Mass High School football uh, season preview is days away. We are three whole days away from it now. Um, see you guys tomorrow.